Welcome to another episode of Have Your Say 247. My name is Rudolph Okonkwo. It's Saturday, September the 17th, 2022. Wonderful day. I hope you are having a good day. I thank you for joining us. All right, all right, all right. Welcome. And today we have interesting show for you. We are going to talk about the new opinion poll that just came out that said that uh, P2B is leading the presidential candidates by 21 points and coming second and third, uh, uh, Balatinubu and Atiku Abubakar. We are also going to talk about the issue concerning uh, Shegumi and his uh, media assistant uh, who um, was picked up in Egypt, uh, brought back to Nigeria to answer charges that he has connections with, um, with uh, international and local terrorists. Also, we are going to talk about the economy. Inflation in Nigeria is an all-time high, 20.52%. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, Abubakar, Atiku Abubakar, who is um, running for president, but he's going on a trip, to a business trip, to see his family in Dubai and to visit Europe. Uh, people forgot that, um, you know, he's having issues with his party, the PDP, uh, trying to deal with internal crisis before he goes out there to um, compete. Let's listen to an old interview with uh, Tiku, a little bit of that. One thing that consistently comes up when you're mentioned is corruption. Why do you think that your name is so linked to corruption? I have been successful. And uh, secondly, I have never been charged. I've never been indicted. They are all allegations. And I have asked anybody, I have dared people publicly, that is, anybody has any evidence of corruption against me, let him come out. Are you corrupt? I'm not certain, you know, because if I'm corrupt, I would have been either charged or indicted. Former president of, As of Hassanjo, who you've recently reconciled with, made those allegations, and uh, why do you think he made them? He investigated me more than any other person else. Why didn't he? Excuse me, why didn't he indict me? There are some reports that you paid more than a million dollars uh, in order to get your visa. What is your response to that? I know my party has a lobbyist, but they engaged that lobbyist before I even ran for the presidency, you know, or the candidature uh, of the party. But to say that they paid for my visa, you know that you don't pay for a U.S. visa. You are on record as saying that you plan to enrich not only your family, but your friends, yeah. if you become president. <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, get some clarification again, on what you again, mean. Uh, Buzari, this is out of context. <laughs> this is your yeah, chance been, to explain. I've been, I've been quoted out of context. You okay. know, what I said is that my friends should not be discriminated because they are my friends. Okay. In fact, all Nigerians are my friends, you know. So let me tell you in our administration we made more billionaires than any other administration i don't think this administration made any billionaire anyway how did you and do that? of those there was none that i knew before hmm. some of your friends became billionaires no they are still not my friends hmm. yes i cannot say that I, have, I don't know them i know them but they are not my friends all right uh, yesterday uh the Labour Party uh, presidential candidate P2B um, was interviewed on CNN. Uh, that has been an interview that a lot of people have been waiting for. Uh, we have a little bit of that interview. We are also going to um, have a conversation around some of the things that uh, P2B said in that interview. Uh, let's see if we have it and we can show you part of that interview. Um, just a minute, uh, let's see. 
okay we don't we don't have it at this moment um oh we should have it okay all right we'll, we'll come back to that uh but but uh, another another issue in the news is um the question of uh yeah peter b uh interview let me see no okay i'm sorry i can't find it and uh, let me let me show you a great speech that was made by someone this uh, past week has been trending. We are going to integrate that in, that in our conversation. So let's see. The choice is ours. If we are concerned about our current state of insecurity, despondency, and hopelessness, if we are concerned now about our declining values, our rate of hopelessness, if we are concerned about our economic dispossession now, if we are concerned about how poor we are going into, every day we are getting poorer, if we are concerned about the decline of education, if we are concerned about the decline of the health sector, if we are concerned about the bad image the international community have on Nigerians, if we are concerned about our future and the future of the next generation, we have a choice to act wisely, to think wisely, to behave wisely, and to vote wisely devoid of any sentiment. This is the last chance we have, 2023. Wallahi, this is our last chance if we get it wrong, we will never get it right. And let me warn you. Yes, this is our last chance. If we get it wrong, we will never get it right. There are so many things going on across Nigeria, and um, we are going to invite our usual panel, our guests, our friends, and people, new people to join us. In the meantime, I found a P2B video, and let's see a little bit of that. To build refineries and operate them, and they are not rocket science. It can be done as quickly as possible. You can use today the side to remove the first subsidy, use the resources to support a, a critical areas of production from critical infrastructure to education, to supporting investment in refinery, which will be, like I said, done within a shortest possible time. A lot of Nigerian presidents have come in and talked about revitalizing the manufacturing sector, investing in refineries, but change, as you know, has been very, very slow. Um, why is it going to be different with, with you? And what would you say were the biggest hurdles in making sure that all of the things that you've just listed come to pass? Well, what people need to do is to go and look at what I promised as a state governor when I said I'm going to turn around education, health, pull people out of poverty, bring sanity and civility in governance in Anambra State, whether that happened or not. When I said we're going to save money did we do that? I want to talk about one of the other sort of major issues. All right. We are going to talk about that in details on the show. But this is a program announcement. Next week, we have something that we have never done before. We are going to have what they're called the longest bombardment. 100 questions in 240 minutes with the Social Democratic Party presidential candidate. Uh, Prince um, Adewale Adebayo. Um, this is uh, going to be something that we hope to do with all the other presidential candidates. <laughs> and we are saying that if your candidate cannot stand the bombardment, he is not ready to serve Nigeria. Next Saturday, I plead to all of you, all our friends, to come. Let's bombard this man who wants to be the president of Nigeria with 100 questions live four hours 
There is no timeout, no bathroom break, no frills, no filters, everything. So join me next Saturday. Let's bombard him with questions. And we are going to invite all the presidential candidates to come on the show. 100 questions in 240 minutes. This is my encounter. With him. I'm in New York City. I want to thank you for making yourself available for this uh, conversation with Nigerians. And I hope you do more of it. You know, it will help you and it will help Nigerians to know you. I didn't know before this that you were the same person that made a speech at the NBA Nigerian Bar Association conference. And, um, but my question is this. Are you not afraid of uh, being the president of Nigeria? If they hand over Nigeria as it is today to you, won't that be, won't you be scared? I think a normal human being will be scared to deal with that. Now, let me, let me go to some of the headlines you've made recently. You, you, the once, in one headline, you said, you, I won't appropriate our oil money as budget if elected president. You said you put it in a fund and... This is money that you acknowledge that is not there because they are, it, it's been stolen, okay? Then there's another headline where you said, I will end insurgency and banditry within 100 days if elected president. Now, to people who have looked at Nigeria, the different aspects of the country, when they see these headlines, serious people, they will think that there's something not serious about you wanting to be president. Why would somebody look at Nigeria today? You are one man. Who will be your team? Who will be the people that will go to that government with you to clean up things so that in 100 days you can deal with the issues of insecurity in Nigeria? How do you, I think, you know, Nigeria is a serious situation. We know that, everybody knows that. And we want serious people to handle Nigeria. And if you want to present yourself as a candidate for president, there are some statements that I think, I expect, and I think Nigerians expect that you will give that a serious thought. Like, like relocating the military barracks, that's not the reason why they are not functioning. I'm sorry, but I, I listened to you. I invested one hour of my time listening to you. I, I wish there would be more time that we will have one-on-one -on -one conversation about this. I think Nigeria is in a serious problem, serious situation. All right, we are going to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with him, and I hope you will join me uh, when we do that. It's uh, going to be very interesting. Also, on this show, what, what people tell me uh, when I go out there, people, people come to me and say, you know, have your say. It's, it's interesting, no, not just that we talk about serious issues, but also that it's, it's funny. You know, we let people be themselves. We, we laugh. We 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 argue, we do whatever we do, but at the end, you know, it's something that people learn something out of. So as part of that, I love that. Let me show you this. Because secrets of pictures, secrets of pictures is based on the premise that a picture is worth more than a thousand watts. Now, the picture you're looking at is that of an armored toilet that President Yoweri Museveni of Uganda took to the inauguration, let me finish now before you start laughing, took to the inauguration of President William Ruto of Kenya. I know, I know. It came fully loaded with red carpets and air conditioner. <laughs> For those wondering if Nairobi doesn't have toilets, why the president of Uganda will take his own personal toilet? Well, let me, let me tell you. You worry Museveni's poop is collector's item. It is in high demand. A beautiful thing like that with the great uh, Museveni DNA. It's a terrible thing to waste. You got to, you, you, you got to co collect it. <laughs> if, if you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, <laughs> I don't know what to do to you. I have no idea. Africans, leaders, are unbelievable. What? Toilets are more... All right, so we are going to bring our guests and our people to the show. So join us and 